the Second Amendment prevents the greatest flaw of the paradox of democracy from creating a self-collapsing democracy. As soon as you take that away, one man can't stand up to many. No matter how well you're trained, unless you're some prodigy of martial arts or you know, you're, you're just a legendary figure, everybody else is going to try to dictate upon you and they're going to find simpler ways, simpler ways to do that, to tell you that you are wrong and you need to be like them. It's like being in the 1990s again, when we were arguing and fighting against conformity. Would I have to be like a punk rock star again? We really are the product of reality in our environments. Otherwise, to, to rebel or to portray yourself as different you, not everybody can make cotton cloth. You can't make your own clothes. And even then, you're still using what the industry is providing. We are still a product of that, no matter what we do and what we try to say and do differently. And to present ourselves as individuals, the only true way that we can become individuals is through our true individuality. And I've never met another individual that was willing to erase another true individual. It's just that when you are so heavily impaired for conformity that you, you only really have an infinitely compounding variable that you can imagine that is going to stretch us all out throughout time. And people, People are not capable of that. We're not. We're defining our value by working at McDonald's or, you know, tire shops and shit. And if you like doing that, that's what I've always said, that's great. You have to explain that to people as well. You literally have to take away their right to rationalize the free will of others. People don't want to be selfless, yet they want people to be selfless for them. And that's why democracy collapses time and time again, is that they want to create victims through majority. True democracy is this little tiny alignment that happens through cognition, where people self-doubt and they create self-awareness, where we finally have to make a choice. There's no other option. We have to make this choice. This matters beyond all the paradoxes, beyond all the laws of free will, all, beyond all philosophy, that people have to come together to make a choice and call it a greater good. And then you find, you know, dimensions of paradoxes there, but that takes so much self-doubt to actually achieve the people today are afraid of somebody crossing two painted lines on a road. Two, two yellow lines. That is democracy today. A stop sign. A piece of fucking metal with some paint on it. In a very elaborate shape. Right? And we call it language. And that means to us that I don't have the right to know when it's safe. We have roundabouts designed for efficiency. People stop at them. They're not stop signs. And they will stop at an open road and question space. As if they're out in the fucking universe and they're thinking, should I take off my, my, my oxygen or should I just, you know, keep floating and then go back into like, you know, the little space station. And that's a, an interesting metaphor because that shuttle keeps you alive, but you can move within it, right? 
well, so is it the same thing as a road or a roundabout? And people, people question emptiness as it's a threat. It's really disappointing to me. I... You know, I'm not some trump card. I'm not the end all be all. I'm just a thinker and I stand alone. Because apparently we are still living. I mean, even if humanity, every single person, came together unanimously to decide that this is, we are going to morally implement one rational evolutionary trait, okay? No matter the child, everybody, we're going to have families and still do what we do now. It's just that we are going to weed out people who deny this moral fiber a certain just one idea one one trait like pushing carts back that are left open in a parking lot but yet we value these people that are given these menial jobs and we objectify them and us as being worthy and that we're fabricating the system that we have to struggle through and climb to the top and pretend like everybody else has to do that. But those people are willing to throw other people back down to the bottom and to the pit time and time again until they get to the top. And their, their self-indulgence with this shopping cart thing which i encounter every day maybe that's where it's derived from is that they think they're giving other people purpose by you know displacing shopping carts well i shopped here i bought your services now chase around the parking lot turn these sharpening cart shopping carts and What's the point anymore? Like, we, we are so basic, right? And I don't want to use that phrase, but... Am I really a threat? Have I become a threat? Or have I become something that is so far unnatural in modern democracy? Because I don't give a fuck about two yellow lines in the road that I understand what that purpose is for in general but when the polar moment happens of conflict that I will go around a car so I can maintain my freedom that's the difference with true democracy you're not gonna just let somebody break open your door with pitchforks burn you alive at the stake because you think differently than them and yet you're thinking for their freedom at the same time so that's where the majority if you remove yourself from this situation the greater good becomes the lesser good and I've said that I'd explain that paradox but Apparently, it just will not manifest in humanity on its own. And like I said, if we took one ideal, one moral fiber, and we tried to weave that into society, and that's what we chose for people, it would take 2,000 years. That's how long it takes. And then they can't define it. Because it's so inherent, it's so natural, that a cat doesn't look at its paw understand why it needs its claws it just has them and he knows how to use them can we weed that into society can we weave pure philosophy into society to where we are just so contemplative that we constantly just find a neutrality and a weapon is anything perceivably but a weapon
that's true world peace, but shit, can't even drive to the grocery store without being called a criminal for understanding how to take an apex and loving the way you shift a fucking jeep for fuck's sake. Thing is a natural air brake. It's like driving a parachute. Just because I understand average momentum and I don't want to sit behind 30 fucking vehicles in front of me to ruin a little bit of joy left. And I'm the problem. And there's this wide open road in front of them. Wide open and free. It's so like I said, remove yourself. Who's the problem? I already removed myself. I went around you. No problem, except for the one you created for me.